IA slots are based on the legacy of instant access buttons which are found in typical controller scenarios. The Liquid Foot Plus series goes a little further with that concept and utilizes the IA or instant access as a group of events. So it's each IA slot is therefore a placeholder for individual or grouped events. A grouped event or an individual slot would typically be used to control stomp box effects, rack units, which are also effects units, and other related equipment. You could utilize buttons connected to the expression pedal ports to also trigger IA slot actions. And stepped events, of course, uh, could be utilized as well. In preset programming as well as IA slot programming, you have this concept of steps, which could be used to trigger events within an IA slot uh, based on the number of times that you press a button or activate a button. Usually the controls are individualized by IA slot, so there would be an IA slot for delay, separate one for drive. If you have an, a loop or a switcher, each channel of the loop or switcher might have its own IA slot. That's typically how you would use it. Although with the flexibility of the liquid foot, we can go much further than that. The interaction of the IA slots uh, is um, uh, dependent on the mode that you're in. There are 60 IA slots that you can program within the liquid foot that are available at all times. And here you can see uh, a handful of IA slot pages uh, from 1 all the way up through 60. Each IA slot can have its own set of singular programming or multiple programming based on your needs. The behavior of each IA slot is defined on the IA slot parameters screen. And within this parameter list, you would define the behavior of the individual IA slot and how it will act with the liquid foot environment. Each preset has its own unique control over all 60 of those IA slots. The initial states that you define per for preset number one could be different than the initial states that you define for all the other presets. So every preset can determine the initial state of the IA switch and therefore the functionality of those IA switches for all 60 of the IA slots that are available. And when a preset is triggered, it will automatically turn the IA slots into the specific initial state. You have access to the IA slots uh, through triggering and toggling and modifying of IA slots by pressing buttons that are defined on a page, uh, as well as via the preset and song programming that's within the liquid foot system. When a button is pressed on a page that's programmed for an IA slot, then that IA slot's programming will be triggered based on the current state that it's in. So if we were to look at that visually, here we are looking at the page magnifier view for a particular setup. And if we look at button number 11 on this page setup, we'll see that the first function is defined to trigger IA slot number 5. So if we press the B11, the button 11, on the controller, then it will trigger the programming that we've defined in IA slot 005 based on the current state of that IA switch. And again, as we switch from preset to preset, those IA states could be modified to suit the particular preset if it's programmed to do so. There are two types of IA slots, global IA slots and non-global IA slots, which is the default. So let's talk about global IA slots. Uh, when you power on the system, the liquid foot will look at the parameters of all the IA slots. And if 
the parameter is set as global, that particular IA slot will then look at the global initial value and that will be the starting point for a global IA. IA switches have the ability to keep their state when they're global when switching from preset to preset. So if we pressed an IA slot that controls an amp, for instance, that's set as global, then as we switch from preset to preset, that amp will stay in the current state. So let's say that amp is on. And when we switch to the next preset, that global IA switch will retain its value and therefore the amp will stay on. However, if a preset is it desires to override the global parameters, then through these two parameter boxes within the preset edit screen, we can override the behavior of global IAs. And so therefore, if we trigger a global override by changing the X to a check mark, we are telling this preset when it triggers to utilize the initial states that are programmed in this preset to overwrite the current state of the global IA, therefore defeating the IA as a global. From that point forward, it becomes a global IA again. So this gives you a lot of flexibility. There are four types of IA slots, and this defines the behavior of how it, beha how it acts as you press buttons or trigger events using the expression pedals, using the trigger commands that might be issued via presets, another IA switch, or the song uh, MIDI programming, uh, or it could be triggered through a button press. So the first type that we have is the stomp type. And stomp behaves by triggering the on programming commands when you activate the, the IA slot, which is usually referred to as going green. And when you press the IA slot again or shut it off, the off programming will be triggered. So in this case, we are going to send a CC command to controller number 49 and we're going to turn it on in the on programming and we're going to send a CC uh, value of 0 to controller 49 when we shut the stomp IA behavior off. So we press the button once or trigger it to on and it triggers the on command. We press that same button again and it triggers the off command. And if we press it again, it goes back to on and then off. So it cycles back and forth. Then we have a momentary type switch, which can also be triggered via a button press uh, or other programming or expression pedals acting like buttons. So in the type momentary, when we first press the button, we actually trigger the off programming message. And while the foot is being held, nothing will happen. So we trigger the off. When we let go of the button, then the on commands are triggered. So you can have an, an example is a rotary brake where we actually want to activate the brake command when we're pressing down on the button and holding it. And you can see that we send a value of 127 to controller 15 in the off command programming which is essentially turning the brake on in this case. Now all effects units are different. You have to, uh, this is just one example. When we let go of the button, we then trigger the on command. And in this case, the on command is a value of zero, which technically turns an effect off, which is exactly what we wanted to do. So there's just one very quick example of a momentary. The next type of switch is a step switch. And a step switch uh, is programmed first by just giving it human readable names. And there are four steps that we could define per preset or per IA slot. So here I've defined a human readable name of 25% boost for step two, 50% boost. 
for step three, 75 percent boost. And for step four, I left it to default because I'm not going to use it. So let's zoom in on the programming for the step. And what we can see here is that uh, when we first press a button, uh, this IA switch gets triggered and it runs the first step. And you can see the first step name is 25% boost. Now there are two commands in this step and we can have any number of commands. The first command is a MIDI command that sends a CC controller message to CC number 12 and it sends a 32 which is 25% of the value from 0 through 127. So this takes my uh, volume and sets it at a 25% level. And then it turns the IA slot button color to the Scion color. Now if we press the IA slot button again on the controller or through a trigger, the liquid foot now knows that we're now on to step two, which is our 50% boost. So the screen will say 50% boost on it. The background color, you can see we set it for red, so the the foot controller will now turn red for that button. And we've sent a MIDI command with a value of 64. And 64 is halfway between 0 and 127, so it's going to turn the volume halfway up. And if we press the button on the foot controller again, or trigger it otherwise, we then go to step number three which is our 75% boost. So we send a MIDI command out again, uh, this time with a value of 96, which is 75%, and we change the color to a purple. Now at this point, if the user presses the button again, we start all the way back up to step one. So we'll go back down to 25% boost. So that's just a very simple example, but that's how steps work. Quick tap is essentially the ability to send one stream of commands as quickly as possible and that's it. So when we press the, or trigger this IA slot uh, then when it's in an on state it will in this case trigger the guitar tuner so you can see we programmed a guitar tuner special function and it's going to trigger uh, CC number 15 on the external device to turn it on. And so here's a, a very easy example of how to use a quick tap. So quick tap means that we run through the on commands as quick as possible and we get out. The IA slot will always be in the on state for a quick tap.